So we increased it by 43% or $58. Someday, if the interest rates ever turn around, we'll be able to make some more money here. But right now, it doesn't look, appear to be that way. Any questions on the uh, page one, the summary of our financial position? All right, page two is our um, revenues. And again, the second column from the left is our revenues for the month. The assessments were due December 1st, and we had three communities that were late. Uh, Ohasset was December 20th. Hanson was December 5th, but that could be because of the way the holiday felt. I'm not really concerned about Hanson. And as we mentioned, since it was December 26th. Yeah, and maybe we tell that the, the uh, the holidays were on a Wednesday, but that's very unusual. Most of the time, the eight towns pay us before the due date. We do have all the money, and we are very appreciative of that. The other thing that we have for revenue is 318000 for our 112 Chapter 70 money that we now get annually, uh, monthly rather than quarterly. Are there any questions on the revenue? If not, we want the expenditures. Now, again, this is six months, so. Uh, I'd like to take a closer look at it and see if we can see anything that's going on. But, uh, item two, workers' comp, uh, we will still remain positive at a $35,000 variance in that account that hopefully we can use later on because the, uh, the injuries we had rolled off. Item five, county retirement, we made the second payment and we're right on budget. Item eight, utilities. Right now, we're about 12% ahead of what we were last year in utilities. I, I would say that's because of the kind of weather we've had. But again, I don't anticipate any shortage there. I think it's still going to be in pretty good shape. Item 12, legal and audit. It really hasn't spent enough, a lot this year, but we just got to go to 13,000 from our lawyers. You can see that next month. Item 14, payroll taxes, again, is one of the things I'm concerned about. We may be short about 5,000 uh, when we get to the end of the year. Item 15, health insurance is right on budget. Uh, no issues there. Uh, pupil transportation, it, it looks a little high because we really don't have a lot, of, a lot left in the budget from, other year, uh, from a year ago. But that's because we have uh, repaired most of the buses and repaired the maintenance budget is effectively gone. So if something happens, we're, we're going to have to look for a transfer there. That's, that's about the only place you see something that's happening major. Uh, item 23, books and instructional supplies, we have spent 43% for the, for the six months. Uh, last year we spent 52%, so a little bit behind on that. Uh, shop supplies and equipment, item 25, uh, we have spent 65% of that budget for the six months. And then last year we had spent 49%. So that's good. We should be working on that as we go through the school year. Uh, those are the major items I thought you should be aware of. Does anybody have a question on any, any other plan? If not, we'll go to page four, which is the uh, revenue expenditure chart for the month. Again, I don't think that's really time to follow so I'll let you go to page five unless somebody has a question on it. And uh, the revenue expenditures for the six months. And as you can see, the uh, on the revenue side, the, uh, the Kelly Green piece of the pie chart is the uh, assessments from the communities, which outweighs the red piece, which is the chapter eight, uh, chapter seventy-eight from the state. Uh, and down the bottom on the uh, expenditure side, the pie chart with the Kelly Green color, of course, is our largest expenditure, which is salaries and wages. And the second largest is the uh, general expenses, which, as I said, as we go through the year, they will they will diminish a bit because we pay all that stuff up front. Uh, any questions on the pie charts? If not, that would be the treasurer's report, Mr. Chairman. I have no budget transfers. Okay. Um, I'll make the motion on We have normal. We have a second. Cohasset. All those in favor? Say aye. Unanimous. Uh, Easy certification. Yes, we sent to you, uh, as you know, by law, we are we are we can only keep uh, free cash, as other communities would call it, equal to 5% of next year's budget. And uh, the POR certifies 
that we are keeping compliant. If we are over the 5%, we have to send the money back to the communities. And they sent us a letter that said we are, our $530,601 of surplus revenue is in compliance with the 5%. And again, I have 558, which is in compliance also. They always come to a lower number. I don't know why. But this was sent out to all the communities in an email. Uh, no one caught it. Let me know and we'll forward it to you. But it's a good thing. We're in compliance with the law, which we should be. There's no vote required, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, as far as the Chairman's report, the only thing I would mention is the previously scheduled January 22nd meeting for the budget is canceled, and that we're not going to be certifying the budget tonight. So we don't need that. Next month, you no know, early uh, town meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a few items for this evening. Uh, first off, document six, I want to provide you with a mid-cycle update on my uh, professional practice and student learning goals. This is an expectation uh, in the midst of every 12-month period. So uh, I brought you a series of goals uh, at the beginning of the cycle. Uh, I'm pleased with the progress at this point. I have to thank our administrative staff for working hard towards these goals with me. Uh, we're revising our district improvement plan. We're in the process of uh, overhauling our website, and uh, so hopefully we'll have a brand new website to bring to you in the near future. The administrative staff is meeting weekly with a company called Edline uh, to develop that. It's going to be much more interactive. Uh, I see it as a uh, I see it as a great way to showcase the school. The current website is uh, is functional, but it's not dynamic. And these days, if you have a web, if you don't have a website that is dynamic, it's not going to be utilized. So they're working really hard on that. Uh, I have a series of student learning goals that are year-long regarding student failure rates, students participating, uh, uh, obtaining third-party licensure. I'll bring you updates on those uh, results at the end of the, the end of the school year. We have trained all of our administrators and teachers on the new teacher evaluation system. We continue to provide a, a structured amount of support. Uh, it's a new system for everybody, and I'm very pleased with the progress. Uh, our administrators are uh, communicating with teachers on a regular basis. Uh, we'll be establishing a meeting, uh, a regular meeting with teachers to talk about all aspects of the evaluation system. And so I'm pleased with that progress. And uh, also, our up the update I provide you on the various tasks that our human resources coordinator has been uh, engaged in. We'll get three times. The second item on my uh, on my report, I wanted to let you know that uh, recently I was uh, I was asked if I would be interested in serving on the uh, the committee that certifies NEASC accreditation reports for vocational schools in New England, and uh, my name was placed in nomination and um, and I was uh, voted in, so I'll be serving a three-year term on the NEASC Career and Technical Committee. That this committee meets a couple of times a year in order to review all of the reports from all of our sister career and technical schools. And probably one of the first ones that will come up is a school called South Shore Vote Tech in <laughs> April, which I'll have to probably leave the room for. But uh, other than that, I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to bring us to a stage where I will get to hear and see a lot of the best practices going on around New England and also share what, what we do so well. And the third item I'm very pleased to, uh, to tell you about uh, in writing here, uh, I mentioned it very briefly last month because I had just received an email a few hours before the meeting, that we were a recipient of a Massachusetts Life Science Center grant. And I wanted to, I'm sharing with you in document seven, a copy of the grant application. Uh, we, are, we are not, I am not, I am not gonna need to prioritize in the budget uh, $80,000 worth of equipment and supplies for our machine shop program, thanks to the Massachusetts Life Sciences Center. We'll be preparing a press release on this. Uh, this is further, this is gonna further modernize the equipment we have in that program. And I'm thrilled that, uh, I'm thrilled that we're one of 35 school districts that were chosen uh, to receive that grant. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have at this point. Thank you very much. You're welcome. To unfinished business now. I'll take a roll call vote to go into public session for a public hearing for the fiscal year 
should be by just having them. Rock one? Yes. Yes. Fits with you. Go ahead. Yes. Cancel. And Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an opportunity for any member of the public who would like to speak on the budget, but I will take a moment at the beginning to just point out to you that uh, we, have a, we have a budget book available. I think folks from our, many, thank you for the representatives from our towns here this evening. Do you all have a copy of that book? Okay, thank you, Robert. But we have one extra copy here, Robert. I want to thank Bob and the business office for preparing this document. I'll just focus on the summary page, which is page one. The presentation that I made at the committee meeting in December indicated that we are proposing, uh, I'm proposing a budget increase overall of 4.67%. And what the summary page does is essentially, uh, it, in the succeeding pages, you'll be able to unpack the numbers a little bit more. But the three columns that are provided will show Extended through fiscal 13, what we're currently looking at for a budget, what we're living with right now is our fiscal 14 budget and the proposed budget for fiscal 15. So the total budget amount in the lower right corner, $11,722,183. Some of the highlights of the budget are the, the focus, uh, if I was going to unpack it in a couple places, would be personnel and also capital. Uh, Coming off of the NEAS report that I mentioned a little earlier, one of the things that will be brought out is, uh, is the need for uh, space. And so, in order to attempt to address some of the space needs, and I'm not talking <coughs> about structural at the moment, uh, but I do have built into this budget money for capital expenses that will allow me to renovate the main office to help consolidate some <coughs> administrative office space in order to free up space for uh, multi-purpose use. I mentioned in my presentation that Places for students to uh, places for students to make up MCAS tests in school suspension, staff meeting space is at a premium. These are all very good problems to have, as we are now a school with 601 in district students. But we do have to be accommodating in terms of space. So when we talk about capital increases, there's money set aside for that. And there's also money set aside for some construction projects, which I'm pleased to say, if we move forward with it, at whatever pace we move forward. These building projects that will be uh, that will be in the uh, in the back of the building near the barn will be projects that, uh, by and large, can be accomplished by our carpentry and our electrical programs. And then, in terms of personnel, there's additional money in the in the budget relative to increasing a part-time custodian to full-time, uh, a cafeteria aide, uh, an additional position that I'm referring to as a lead bus driver to assist our facilities uh, manager and our assistant principal with transportation duties and also a network support specialist. You'll see a couple of those positions in a moment, a little bit later in this agenda, uh, a couple of job descriptions in, in that area. I am very grateful for the department heads and the cost center supervisors who built their budget around, the, around what they needed. And what, what I think this budget summary and, and, the, uh, and the succeeding pages will show is that oftentimes you'll see numbers that will go up and they'll go down. And that's exactly what should happen. There should not be a steady increase in all cost centers. Because if that's the case, then I'm not really sure we know what we need. So, one of the pages in here that I, when, when I was looking at this, you know, that because when I build the when I build the budget and bring it to the committee, I don't build it for the purposes of this document. I build it at the cost center level, and when the numbers shake out, they they shake out. So, for instance, in books and instructional supplies, in some years there's been more vocational, and in some years there's been more academic. Maybe that's because of a computer card. Maybe that's because of <coughs> new mathematics textbooks but we're always trying to target and move the dollars around exactly where they're needed. They might be needed in one year and not in the next. So this is a great document. We will, we will uh, convert this to a PDF. For those of you from uh, our, our district communities, we'll convert this to a PDF. We will put it on our website uh, so that it will be easily accessible. We typically will provide two documents. The PowerPoint presentation that I did last month, we'll put up there, as well as the summary document as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, I have a motion to go out of the discussion, right? Yes. Go ahead, Hanson. All those in favor? Uh, okay, unanimous. Okay, so we'll move on to new business. Back to you. Oh, Mr. Chairman.
Chairman. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Under uh, document number eight, I'm bringing to you under new business. Uh, as part of my budget presentation from last month, uh, I have uh, I'm proposing the creation of two new positions. The creation uh, should you should you agree with the creation of these positions this evening? Uh, the intent is not to fill these positions until the next budget year. There, so there are two job descriptions that I've provided you. The first one is for a technology support specialist, and the second is for a lead bus driver. Okay, we have a motion to accept that uh, creation of the new positions, of the new positions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have to go acid. We have a second no vote. No. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I may, under 8B, uh, I want to thank Holly Ditchfield for preparing an extensive memo that I typically would bring to the policy subcommittee and then bring to the full committee. But given the given the amount of detail that she's provided in attempt in attempting to consolidate some of our policies regarding harassment, what I'd like to do is just provide it for your information this evening, and then I will go back to the policy subcommittee to get their feedback. And should there be no changes to the recommendations, I would simply bring this back to you at a future meeting. This is not time sensitive. We'll we'll work it through the process that we normally do for policies, but I wanted to bring it to you uh, this month. So it's just for your information at this point. Next up, we have the surplus declaration for the technology department. Mm -hmm. uh, in motion to make a vote on that, to accept the uh, surplus declaration. Yeah, Rockman, do we have a second? Yes, sir. Go acid. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Do we have any warrants? Thank you. 